And happy Wednesday, everyone. So for the must segment for today, we'll talk about the great realizations, big lessons people leaders should learn about employee exodus. So I'm very excited to introduce to you our speaker for today, our guest. We'll have Ms. Jennifer Simons Castillo, Communications Manager of Savvy. Hi, Ms. Jennifer. Hi there. Hello. It's great to see you. How are you? I'm well, Mark. Thanks so much for inviting me. I'm so excited to talk to you today. It's my first time on People Managers on Cam. I'm super excited to be here. And we're also very excited to hear your insights, Jen. So let's start. I know we're very excited for this topic. But before we start, let's just define some terms. So what do we mean when we say employee exodus? Well, it sounds a bit like epic, right? Like when you hear the word exodus, yeah. um, it does feel like a whole bunch of people are leaving. And especially over the past two years, when I know that people managers all across the country have been, you know, trying to keep as many people as possible employed because yeah. this is this is our livelihood. All of us know what it's like to not have income, you know, at some point in time after we've been doing all we can to keep as many people employed as possible. Um, people are leaving and people are leaving in their jobs in record numbers. Um, it's it's a bit difficult to find reliable research um, on the local market. To be honest, Mark, this is a big task for us and the research committee. Um, I agree implement these numbers, but in 2020, um, the Philippine Statistics Authority told us that 40% of separations in the fourth quarter of 2020 were due to personal issues, right? So that was way up from the year before. Also, 14% of people went AWOL, which is compared to under 10% the year before in 2019. So that was back in 2020. Now, you know, Sprout PH has told us that month-to-month -month attrition last year was 14% higher than, in, than previous to the pandemic. So something is definitely happening. And that, you know, with, in straightforward numbers, Mark, is, is what this great exodus is, I'm yeah. sure. You know, everybody's kind of used to a little bit of a rise in attrition in the first quarter of the year. But this year, in the past two years, it's really been extra an extraordinary rise. And I think that's why we're starting to call it an exodus. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with that, Jen. So uh, why do you think that despite the lack of jobs because of the pandemic, people laying off, uh, companies laying off people, why do you think are there still a lot of people resigning from their jobs? Well, it's difficult um, to, you know, answer you as the as the head of the research committee with with yeah. guesses, right so <laughs> i have to refer to to savvy's workplace market intelligence yeah. like our company is has grown into a 360 degree solution platform for employee wellness because we know that really the backbone of engagement with our employees is their wellness at work and engagement, as we see engagement levels rise throughout companies, then we see people stay longer at companies because they're simply happy with happier with you, right? So this has been something that people managers everywhere have become more and more aware of. And that's why people keep talking about employee engagement, right? How it's so challenging, especially in the hybrid workplaces we are all dealing with now. Um, so the so as engage as as a company that's aiming to support HR professionals in their engagement efforts and you know to support your employees' well-being, we really do conduct quite regular ongoing surveys of our customers who are the employees of our partner companies. Yeah. So the one that is of particular interest to this discussion is a survey that we've had running since the end of April this year. So this is very new data. Uh, we have yet to publish in a paper. Um, so you guys are getting the first look, actually. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, this is a survey of 10,000 separated employees. Uh, 
over the past like two months, right? We have found that, okay, so 67% of them as expected already had new jobs, you know, signed up with new employers when they resigned, when they were separated, when they declared separate, they wanted to be separated. But what's interesting to this discussion, Mark, is that the number of people who did not have a new job when they resigned was about, was 37%, right? So that's really huge. Of those people, we asked further, they left. Why they decided to resign, even if they had no other employer waiting. And the top reason, 37% of of our answers, um, said that this was due to office location and work from home policies changing. So given that the majority of our survey respondents were in the BPO industry and the government made a big push for return to work at yeah. in, during this quarter too, it's really understandable that this is a jarring change for so many white collar workers. And they they ask themselves, they start asking themselves questions, you know, why am I working at this job? Does it really align with my personal views what's in it for me you know is it really the finances that are the bottom line right i mean compensation and benefits are always top of mind when we're talking about retention and recruitment um there's another whole discussion there sir mark about you know salary what do they call it there's a term for this salary benefits total rewards package yeah, total rewards packages. I mean, that's what we aim to support at Savvy. But there is something that labor economists call a salary compression, where new hires tend to get higher salaries than older or, sorry, more yeah. tenured employees, right? And that's just a function of negotiation and the younger uh the workforce gets the more confident they are in in their value and negotiating for higher salaries so there there are a couple of reasons why people are leaving (laughs) a really alarming number because like what we've been talking about despite not having financial security people opt to resign because they wanted to prioritize well-being and wellness as he said right and then uh, it makes me think that it's no longer just an HR challenge. It's really a leadership challenge, a business challenge. So what do you consider as like the major challenges for businesses in relation to employee exodus? Well, they, they call this in the U.S. the great resignation, right? Yeah. Um, so I'd like to bring you to the answers of the man who actually coined that phrase, um, his name is Anthony Klotz, and he really goes into the psychology of how working from home has changed how we think about, you know, the intersections or the overlapping of life and work and what we want out of both, right? So he wants us to, he recommends that we all take this as an opportunity to you know, instead of going back to business as usual, as we now return to this post-pandemic normal, to understand that our businesses now, our workplaces, need to be integrated with our workers' humanity, right? Um, he actually suggests um, that we ask ourselves these these few questions. If I may, Sir Mark, recommend yeah, some sure. questions for everybody to ask. So, number one, do I need all of my employees in the office full time? Right? I rethink of your attendance policies, maybe in order. Of course, this is not applicable to all industries, right? So, it really does um, need to align with your needs as a business and your culture, right? How much time do you really need? for your employees to be physically in the office. Number two is, do I have a mental health policy? Do I need to create one separate from my wellness policy, right? Because of the obvious rise in um, awareness around mental health 
and the multitude of issues that can affect your workers' well-being. Mental health is right there at the top of the list. Even before the pandemic, right? Dole was really pushing for this in operational um, health and safety uh, policies. Um, my question number three for everybody would be to take a look at your performance evaluations, right? Do they align with what is important to your organization's culture? as well as what is important to your employees, right? That's a good place to really identify what's important to you and what's important to your teams. If they, they must overlap and they must intersect in the majority of questions, right? That's a good way to evaluate if your culture is aligned with what your employees want out of their job. And then you can start thinking about benefit packages and how that aligns with what's important to your employees. Yep, a really great question, Ms. Jen. So for those of you who have just listened to us, so ask yourselves about three things, about attendance, about mental health policy, and about performance. And I agree, Ms. Jen, I'm really happy that even before the pandemic, the government has been initiating policies already, right, on telecommuting, OSH or Occupational Safety and Health and also Mental Health. So it's just that we haven't implemented that really seriously before, but now it's like the pandemic has driven us to implement these things. And I agree with you, it's time to bring back the human in HR and organizations. It used to be a nice to have and now it's a must have. Yep, that's why we, you are in the must segment of this program because you really have to consider this employee exodus. So you, lastly, for my last question, Ms. Jen, you mentioned that the re great resignation is present in the U.S. Do you see it happening in the Philippines? And what, if not, what do you think is the situation of the Philippines now? Oh, we definitely see it happening. Our So Savvy supports um, over 100 corporations, right? So these are the largest employers in the country. And probably maybe some of our, our clients are here watching. Hi, guys. Yeah, hello um, there. Comment if you're a client of Savvy. Yes, please let us know. Um, they have really been um, reaching out to us to request further support, right? Because through the pandemic, not it wasn't only our employees who were under a lot of pressure. HR executive HR practitioners at every level were frontliners of the corporate world. And by the second year of the pandemic, it was it was getting very, very much more challenging, right? Like our jobs as people managers, just the tasks just grew exponentially and burnout was something that was happening in HR teams all over the country, all over the world. So, and that's why we actually started really pushing our employee engagement webinars around financial, personal finance education and mental health education. So that's something that Savvy provides for all of our, our clients, all of our HR teams. We support in that regard, not just to, to build up the skills of your HR execs, but also of your employees. I think, yeah. I, did I answer your question, Mark? I'm not sure if I did. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. And thanks as well for sharing for this whole period. Definitely, Employee Exodus is here, and then, but it's a leadership challenge that we can still address. So we have a lot of support here. You have PMAP, you have Savvy, and you have leaders around the Philippines and around the world to share best practices. So once again, thank you, Ms. Jen, for joining us for today's segment. Thanks Always for having safe. me. See you on LinkedIn. Thank you. Thank you, Jen.